Hi, my name's Lindy and welcome to my channel. My website is www.lindycowling.co.uk, email info at lindycowling.co.uk and the title of this video which follows very quickly on from the last one, it's kind of the sister or brother video to it, is codependency as a program. Codependency as a program. So just as I explained in the last video, I'm going to keep this one slightly shorter simply because I'm running out of time and I have a client in 15 minutes. Uh, there is a difference between human nature, authentic, true human nature, loving to have and actually thriving from having human interaction and human com company. And in fact, for almost all of us, there are some exceptions to this, some people that really love to live like hermits or love to retreat from the world and absolutely love it and thrive on it. That's a smaller category. The majority of human beings actually thrive on and love human interaction, the human life, human in interplay of consciousness they love being around people. They love socializing. It's called normal, natural, and it's actually very good for our health. And when we're not in those circumstances, yes, we do learn to become very self-sufficient, um, very independent. We learn an awful lot about ourselves. But if it goes on and on and on and it's very protracted, it then becomes very detrimental for our health not to be normally interacting with people and connecting. The reason I'm saying this again is it is an experiential channel. So everything that I talk about, I've been through personally and professionally in the work, but personally as a human being. But also I'm explaining this this way so I can point out the difference there between that, which is normal, natural and part of our growth that's how we learn and grow through mirroring with other people developing with other people expanding with other people that's normal and natural to to want human connection human company then there is the difference the slight difference between that and codependency codependency in our culture and i can only comment really predominantly on the culture i'm living in at the moment, which is the Western world, but I could say, you know, across the world globally, um, that applies what I just said, but uh, particularly here, codependency is rife, absolutely rife. It is encouraged really from the age of zero. And when you think about the age of zero, we are actually totally dependent for our life, actually, on, for example, our parents. That's not so much a learned thing, that's fact, because if they don't feed us, we don't get fed and we don't get anything to drink. And if they don't change our nappies, they don't get changed. So we are coming in, in that sense, physically in body consciousness, in body, helpless, because we rely on being fed and cared for for a while. In those first so many years, we actually do depend on that. So that part is actually very normal again and natural. So that's a natural thing, a normal thing, and so is the thing about wanting to connect and human company. But then it starts to get very distorted again. And why it starts to get distorted again is because every single, well, I say every single, 95% of all pop records out there, 95% of all television shows out there, 95% of all films out there, 95% of all human relationship belief systems out there are based on codependency. That you cannot live as an adult without the other person or you need the other person to fix something in you. Not just the human interaction and human company side of it, but that you need them and you need to rely on them for your life. Now, we could de deviate back and say, could some of that be left over from the very helpless baby stages? 
and the helpless so many years into life where we were as children dependent on parents. Yes, I think some of us can get stuck in that and we replay those patterns for the rest of our lives, you know, until we realize there's a choice in that. Because it is a very primal instinctual pattern to depend for one's own life on parents, for example. So I do feel that a strong part of that interweaving into that is because as adults, we still have that in our consciousness. That was a fact. It did happen. We did need them for life. And I think it can get interwoven on needing a partner, otherwise you're going to die without them, or needing the relationship. But it gets twisted and manipulated here. And it's a it's a 95%, I would go perhaps even higher than that, across the population, this very strong codependency distortion. Now, I feel there are two key reasons. One, because we were born depending on others to live as a baby. And that's got carried on as a primal instinct. And I don't feel it. I feel there's something gone wrong there. And I'm going to use the same example as I did in the last video, the worship program one. I feel it's been tinkered with. Human consciousness, the human template, the human blueprint, the DNA has been manipulated to keep people looping back into essentially a survival program. The dependency to get food, drink and your nappy changed. That dependency was a survival instinctual program again. And I think it's been tinkered with and manipulated to loop us back in there. I think that's a big one. And I think that's a, that's a main way how that has kept running then further on into adulthood. I'm not saying that there aren't um, variations on this, but I'm generalizing. Uh, in adulthood, when we are relating and having relationships with other people, I feel this codependency, because it's been manipulated, is coming out into great effect then. Because what it means is you can't be your authentic, true, sovereign self if you are dependent emotionally, mentally, physically on someone else to mend you, fix you or validate you. It's a balancing act because look what I said at the beginning of this video. It's a human, normal human state to want to be around people. But this is a balancing, ache, um, t uh, balancing act. I'm talking about the codependency as an actual need, almost like an addiction really, that creates great suffering because when the other or others do not give this back to you, that you are dependent on a knee-jerk response the, underneath all that, almost for your life or well-being on, that's the program, it is very painful and causes a lot of suffering and it plays out over and over again. And, you know, this is very much encouraged in society. Why again? Because it keeps you out of your sovereign, authentic self. It keeps you under control and malleable and controllable, really. Again, by the same, same systems, same structures. Because you are forever searching for it, the person, the thing, the validation from outside of you. So I hope this video stimulates some thought there, some discussion there, some aha moments there, some realizations there, the slight differences between this. And I personally feel these things have been manipulated just like the unrequited love thing manipulated, just like the light programs and the control energies. I feel they are all horses out the same stable, all coming out the same melting pot and there has been a lot of tinkering done on a grand scale in the years that went before this, a long, long time ago, to keep people wired into these very primal responses. It's been slightly modified rather than the encouragement through the whole structures of everything in our worlds and society to help us become authentic, sovereign, multidimensional beings. Because then you know you're standing in your power.
and there are many that would like to not see people stand in their power because then the world would be ruled by the many and not the few. On that note, I'll love you and leave you. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel and me as the channel in all the ways that you do. If you do celebrate Easter in the country that you're in or watching this, um, have a nice Easter bank holiday weekend. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.